So that shiny new game just came out, Soul Mask, and you want to know if it's worth your time, right? Well, let's take a look at the game first and first impressions. Keep in mind, this is not a full review, this is a quick look at the game. I played the game for about 5 hours, so I'll show some footage of the game while describing it and giving a few thoughts on it. One thing I need to say right away is that this map is pretty big. I played for 5 hours, like I said, and I was only in a small portion of the map. There's still much more of the map for me to explore than where I was, and more enemy types. I was pretty entertained the whole time, and I didn't even progress that far in any category really. In the menu you have solo, slash friends, and online game. I selected the solo and friends option to play by myself. There's a whole lot of options for your game to select, especially under the advanced settings. Also the max player count seems to be 8 just based on the slider alone. I left everything default though and I didn't touch the advanced settings. I just played on normal difficulty. After doing that there's a scene except it was crazy stuttery for me and I'm unsure what was going on there. Something might have been loading or it might have been my computer, I don't know. The scenes don't make a whole lot of sense either. There's a guy with a knife who kills a chick strapped down and then it shows someone in a cage which is you customizing your character. There's not a whole lot of customization here, it's pretty basic. Also this game isn't sexual in the slightest but for some reason there's a breast slider on the female page and they're crazy jiggly. Seems kinda needless but alright, that's something. After creating a character the scene begins again. The tribal chief looking guy gets hit with an arrow and then the whole camp is attacked. In the chaos you escape and slide off a cliff right into a temple I think. Your character character limps over and then a mask materializes and attaches itself to your face. There's a few color options but the main thing is a mask type, civilization, conquest, and rich. Each mask have different perks available and I didn't even read them that much. I just picked conquest because I'm going to be a god of war, obviously. Then there's another scene and your character walks through a portal. I honestly have no idea. This whole story doesn't have much story at all or structure. Regardless, that's what happens and now you're in the wilderness, ready to begin. At this point, I read tutorials for about 6 minutes here, there's a lot of pages to get through. There's a few tabs you'll be using often, or often enough. That's the knowledge and technology tab where you unlock more crafting recipes like stone axe, wooden wall, leather armor, and so on. I mean there's a whole lot here and in the 5 hours I played I was only halfway through the bonfire phase. Also I'm just now realizing there's a slider on the bottom of this page and I never looked to see what was next after bonfire. Ok I just now loaded the game back up and I looked. There's 6 stages in total and the last 2 are still age and deep in ruins. Deep in ruins only has 4 options that look like enhancements though, so steel age seems to be the actual last stage. Then you'll be using the mask node repair tab somewhat often as well. Here you can upgrade your mask's abilities. There's a decent amount here and in the time that I played I only had about maybe 5 or 6 in total. They cost certain crystals and I think another item, I don't remember. I always found them at the ruins though. Other tabs of note are the character and items tab. Character is where you assign your level points when you rank up and items is your inventory. Also in your inventory is crafting. If you hover over an item it'll tell you what you need to craft it. You have clothing slots with armor ratings and a ring and necklace slot that can also boost you in some way. On top of all of that you have mask energy which is what's used when you use mask abilities. By default the only ability you have is a sense life within 10 meters. Then there's how tired your character is. You can rest and bring that higher. There's also a weight system as well and if you're too heavy you'll be moving slower. You can carry a lot though so it's not too bad. Then of course you have the classic hunger and thirst to take care of. Then I took a look at the map and like I said before it's pretty big. I stayed in a small radius near the starting area and I had more than enough tasks to do for 5 hours. There are also people and animals and some will attack you right away and others don't care unless you attack them first. Collecting items and crafting is most of this game so if you don't like that then you will not like this game. Cut to a little bit later and I come across two people at a campfire. I decided to stab one and I was woefully unprepared. I died in one hit. Luckily when you die you can respawn and get your stuff back. There will be a mark on the map and it will all be in a basket. I died several times too, sometimes really far away. I spent like 20 minutes one time trying to get back all my stuff because I was so far away and animals kept attacking me and killing me before I could get there. A little while later I'm building my first base and a random lady runs up to me wanting to team up. I accepted. Once you have a follower you can do several things with them. View their inventory, take or give items, rename them, and give them work to do around the camp. Like maintain the fire or go collect wood or follow me around. Stuff like that. There's other things too but I honestly spent most of my time away from this camp and building another one further out. I kind of forgot
forgot about her, honestly. In hindsight, I should have taken her with me and had her collect things for me. I'll always remember you, girl one. The whole time, I was loosely following the instructions on the top left, meaning I got to them but eventually. It guides you actually pretty nicely and progresses you onward, so it's good to follow. I then got stuck on one task for a little bit, but I figured it out eventually. You have to fight a barbarian, get them to 20% health or lower, and then deter them, which is like knocking them out or something. Once done with that, you need to raise their recognition level to 500, at which point you can recruit them into the tribe. However, the recognition level took ages and ages to go up. I tried giving them bandages or soup while they were knocked out, but it's still slow. Eventually, they woke up and killed me while I was crafting in a menu. I was so unprepared for that. The next time around, I did something different. I built a whole new camp and a bed. The bed part is the crucial part here. Take the knocked out person, put them in the bed. They will not wake up, and the recognition level will eventually reach 500, and then I recruited them. The bed was a lifesaver. I gave her a task of mining, but she just ran to a wall and stopped there, so I had to put a door right there. Also, one mask ability is to take control of other tribe members, so I took control of her, walked her outside, broke down the wall, and then switched back to my character. She was then unstuck and did her task. I honestly really like this game. Most survival types don't really click with me, but this one did for whatever reason. The mask thing is also pretty interesting, but honestly, I was surprised with how smooth the gameplay was. A lot of survival games I try have performance issues, but this one was pretty good. I played on 1440p with a 3080 Ti, DLSS on quality, and everything on ultra. My FPS was around 60 to 130 most of the time, and the gameplay was always smooth. Probably three times only, I felt a large stutter, and at the beginning of my playthrough, my game randomly crashed. After that one crash, it was smooth sailing for many hours though. I'm not even the type of person who plays these survival crafting games that often, but something about this one I just really liked. If you're a fan of these types of games, or even aren't a fan, kind of like myself, I think you'll find something special with this one. Though that's my personal opinion. Whether or not this is your type of game, I'll see you on the next one.